Now, here's an interesting story of the metaverse king, a South Indian called Vignesh Sundaresan, also called Meta Coven, which means king of Meta. Was it in fact has the world talking now? He's of course not huge crypto. He's got huge crypto assets and has also hosted a slew of parties on the metaverse and even bid of art piece in digital art displays. Let's take you through all those details about how one has really used bitcoins to garner assets. You've probably seen this image before. It's the digital artwork titled Every Day's The First 5,000 Days, created by Beeple. In March, it made headlines after it fetched nearly $70 million at a sale by Christie's. An unfathomable number, to be quite honest. The purchase shook the art and crypto worlds. It was the first time a major auction house sold a digital artwork in the form of a new crypto asset called Non-Fungible Token, or NFT. Behind the purchase was an Indian cryptocurrency investor known as Meta Coven. Post the Beeple um, event, you know, like we've been thinking what, what, what NFTs are and, and how, how we can like make people experience it. Meta Coven's real name is Vignesh Sundarisan. Over the past year, he's become the top spender in the hottest area among crypto investors, which explains the nickname he gave himself. Meta Coven translates as King of Meta in his native Tamil. Sundarisan told Reuters he financed the Beeple purchase from his personal investments in cryptocurrencies. You know, I've been a crypto native since 2013, right? And uh, uh, I've been lucky to be part of various projects that, you know, blossomed, including Ethereum. And then in, by 2017, uh, it was Polkadot, right? And, and, and by 2020, it was Avalanche and uh, Flow, right? So it's been quite interesting of a journey that way. Since 2019, he's gone on a virtual spending spree in the emerging NFT market and snapped up hundreds of acres of digital land in online worlds like Decentraland. These are strategies that would, I would take, right? Like basically capital allocation. Long term, I've invested in many technologies, right? Like including Decentraland and anything that, that excites me. And I think it's bringing more people into the industry. I usually try to be part of those you know, either the seed or, or, the, or the early stages of, of those. So definitely my Ethereum has never just reminded us Ethereum, it has gone into other, uh, other communities also. Sundarisan represents a new generation of investors, the cryptocurrency kings who've created fortunes out of sight of financial regulators. Their true net worth is obscure because their assets exist mostly in the semi-anonymous blockchain, not in bank accounts, shares or property. When asked about his current net worth, Sundarisan said he was not comfortable disclosing it. Like I'm in crypto, right? So I really don't... Uh, I, I really don't think it's, 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 it makes sense for me to, you know, give, give, you, give you a dollar amount and it's not something I've, I'm comfortable, you know, just disclosing. Reuters reporting shows Sundarisan trod a sometimes rocky path in accumulating his assets, leaving behind frustrated customers and investors who say they lost, in total, millions of dollars. In three interviews with Reuters, Sundarisan denied any wrongdoing. Some regulators have warned of the dangers of the new markets, noting fraud and scams are a risk. Regulators have not named Sundarisan in any such context. For now, with little government supervision or legal recourse, regulators say crypto investors accept a significant risk of losses in any project.